Hello everyone, the Senpai Code here. So let's get into episode 2 of the video game series that I'm doing for my channel here. So this is Unity 2017.3.0 F3, that's the version. As you can tell up at the corner, so you can see what version you guys all have too. So if it's a bit different, if it's a little bit older version, it shouldn't matter too much. Uh, there shouldn't be any difference. So make sure you're on new and you can actually change your project name here. You can actually change the location of where you want to be saved. You can pick if it's going to be 3D or 2D. We're going to make sure it's 3D. And for this, uh, the sake of the tor tutorial series, I'm just going to call it uh, tutorial series. Uh, and we can add assets here, asset packages, but we're not going to do that. We're going to do that in game. So don't worry about that now. So let's just go ahead and hit create. And everything should just load up here. It should add all the extensions and everything that's going to be needed. And it's already done. So this is Unity 3D. This is the game engine that we'll be using. It's really user friendly. It comes with mono development. So it's easy to code and script and add everything on here. It comes with a whole bunch of different assets. Uh, we may switch over to the Unreal game engine later on. Uh, but for now, we'll stick with Unity 3D. So this is what you're going to see when you come into the game engine itself. You're going to see the, the directional light. You're going to see the uh, main camera here. Uh, you will have the camera view here. You can actually have it on maximize on play or not up to you. Uh, I'm going to keep it on maximize to play. So let's just jump into this series. And as I go on, I'll try to uh, explain what I'm doing, uh, what controls I'm using. There's different hotkeys that you can actually use. Uh, you can actually change all that in your settings. Uh, but uh, for now, I'm just going to keep everything the same. So let's go ahead and create a game object first. And we're going to create a level uh, to walk around to kind of a train, I guess, so that we can actually edit and add stuff onto. So let's just go ahead and go to game object, 3D object, and go down to train. And let's add that. And so it's going to add this plane. Now this plane, we can actually move uh, all the different... Uh, hills and everything on through the train uh, toolbar here. We can actually smooth the height. We can actually uh, add the height to a certain height. We can actually just make it rise. Uh, we can actually paint textures onto it. We can add uh, trees. We can do a whole bunch of stuff. We can blend in the textures. So if you have like a beach to go into the mountains, we can actually blend the sand into the uh, grass, into the rocks, into the cliffs. Uh, what We'll get into that later though. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and add a character so that we can actually move around the level with. So let's go ahead and add an asset. We'll have to import a package and we'll have to import the character package. And as you see here, as we're in here, you can add particle systems. You can add stuff for the environments like the trees, the blending and all that other stuff. So for particles, you can actually add clouds. You can add fireworks. You can add steam. You can add twisters. You can add... Uh, dust, storms, a whole bunch of different stuff. You can add it all through Unity, and that's why I like this. It's really user-friendly, easy to work with. But uh, yeah, let's go add a character. Uh, I want to have a 3D character. This does come with a first-person character too. Uh, so I'm just gonna import it all. I'm not just gonna. I'm not gonna go through it all right now. So it's just gonna compile all the scripts and everything, and it should import the character package down here and we'll just pick the 3D third person view. Uh, so standard assets is what it's added. So when you actually import assets, it's actually going to go into the standard assets here. So let's go ahead and go to the characters here. Oops, double click on it. Let's go into the third person. Let's go in the prefabs and then grab the third person controller and drag and drop that on here. And this is the third person controller. So prefabs is uh, everything, all the scripts, everything for that character, which is right here, as you can see. If you go in the here, you can actually see the skeleton and all that. All the scripts and everything uh, over here to the right uh, have been added, and you can actually make it into like a package where you can actually just drag and drop a prefab uh, so that you can actually just drag and drop it all instead of uh, taking the third person model, putting it on, and having to re import everything. Uh, add everything back on like all the scripts and everything there uh, if you do have any questions just ask them down in the description down below and i'll try to answer them as quickly as i can and to the best of my knowledge 
So this is the third person. So right now the camera isn't on the third person, it's still where it is. So if we actually hit play, we'll actually just run around and the camera isn't going to follow, it's just going to stay the same uh, position. We don't want that, we want to actually follow. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to drag and drop this camera here in the uh, hierarchy into the third person here. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm looking down here at the camera view. I'm going to make sure I have the move toolbar selected. And I'm actually just going to move this to where I want it. So I'm going to put them kind of in the center. You can actually zero it out too if you want. So let's go actually just do that. Uh, zero, zero. And so right now it's right in the middle. So we can actually move it back to where we want it. We can actually move it up. I actually want a bit. And then we can actually rotate it around. And the rotate is uh, just for set the move. So now what we have is when we play it, because it's actually attached onto the player model itself, it will actually follow the player model. If it's not attached, it won't uh, stick with them. It will just stay in one spot. That's, uh, that's pretty close to the uh, player. We can actually move it back a bit. So we don't have a camera script at the moment attached onto the uh, character. So if I actually hold the left click or the right click, it's not going to do nothing. It's just going to stay behind him and face wherever he's facing, the direction that he's facing. So that's going to be one of the scripts that we will want to do is a camera script. Uh, so for this game, I actually don't want to do as much coding as possible. So most of the stuff, like I said in the previous episode, we'll do animations, we'll do hitboxes, uh, deaths and pickups and all that other stuff. Now that we have our train, now that we have our character, uh, what are we going to want to do? We're going to want to actually uh, have our plot and everything, which I already do. I want to have a kind of a city that's polluting towards a more environmental, uh, tribal nature type place. So let's go ahead and start with scripting. Uh, let's create a proper camera script so that we can actually start moving around so that we can actually look down, look up and look at the stuff. So if we actually do models and stuff, we can actually uh, look at all this stuff properly, zoom into it and all that. So something else is uh, every so often, you may just want to save the scene, save the project. Uh, so if you save the project, it'll save it where, wherever you saved the file, it'll save it in that, it'll just rewrite over it. And then you can actually save the scenes too. So if you want to uh, create multiple scenes, different levels, because uh, we'll be creating different levels and then we'll be putting them all in order to where they're supposed to go or where the person's going to be teleporting to. Uh, so we'll just call this the uh, test level. Or we could just call this, whoops, I spelled it wrong, uh, level one. We could just call it two. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to click on assets here. I'm actually going to close that, uh, this shorten it. You can actually do that with these arrows at the side. So I'm actually going to create a folder. I'm going to call this one scripts. If I can spell proper. I'm going to create another one. I'm going to call this one. Uh, music, I guess, uh, actually it should be called uh, audio. It'll have the music, it'll have the sound effects all in that. Uh, then you can actually create another one. We can call this one, uh, we don't want assets because we have those ones. We can call this um, models, I guess we can call it. Uh, and then let's go ahead and go into the scripts. And now that we got our scripts folder done, let's go ahead and just right click inside there and create a C sharp script. Let's call this advanced camera. Cause we also, we have a camera script array, but this is going to be our advanced one that we'll be using here. So I've been debating on how to do this and this to uh, cut down on time. I'm actually going to just copy and paste the camera script that I created for the uh, previous episodes, uh, to the tutorial one, uh, I'll just copy and paste that into this one. So I'm actually just going to right and click it. And then I'll just go over uh, what it all involves as well as how it works. Uh, and I'll also put it down in the description down below so you guys can actually just copy and paste it too. I would like you guys to actually 
try to type it out and see if you can if there's any errors how to uh, debug how to actually fix that stuff because it can actually just be something as simple as a spelling error one letter off uh, so let's just go ahead and just copy and paste that so in the previous version of unity you actually didn't need to uh, use this use system use collective uh, use in the uni engine you could actually delete that but in this version you actually have to keep those or else you'll get an error you'll get it for your script you'll get it for your transform uh, and everything so just keep those all there <clears throat> And with that being said, let's uh, jump into the script here. So for the script, I do try to keep everything nice and neat. I do like to have the uh, publics all together, the privates all together, and then the bools and whatever else down below. So let's make sure your script uh, matches your name here, your script name matches what it is for the public class here. If it does not match, if there's a space here, and there's not a space here, then the script won't work. It's it'll be trying to call a script that doesn't exist, basically, if your name's wrong. Uh, so always try to keep that. So for the public transform, that's going to be the target. Uh, so what is it going to be? What is the camera going to be targeting onto? And that's going to be our character model here. So we actually don't need the camera here anymore. It can actually be out. Uh, if you do switch your model, like your player model, you make your own custom one. You make a dragon or whatever. Uh, for this script, we will have a target transform for to actually uh, target. So we'll actually just put this script into the main camera, and then we can actually drag and drop, like say this character, onto the script. Actually, I'll do that right now. Uh, so let's go ahead and just drag and drop that out. We don't need it in there anymore. So we have our main camera here. We have our camera script. I'm just going to drag and drop it on. Uh, make sure it's all saved. And there it goes, it updated. So the target. So this is the target transform. And that's going to be the character. So this is what it's going to be locked onto. So if you create your own character, all you need to do is drag and drop it on. And it will actually target onto that character. So for our public, everything that's public will actually show up in the inspector here. So all these show up. Uh, anything private, they'll actually have to go into the script and change it there itself. You'll have to do that in the script. And you got your bool. <clears throat> so uh, your bool will be your click. Sorry about that. Uh, I'm not used to speaking, so my throat does get a bit sore. Um, so what button you're going to be clicking, it'll either click false or click true. If it's true, then it'll activate something. If it's false, then it'll unactivate something. So the best thing to picture is kind of if there was a box here and there would be a check mark like this right here. Uh, and so if it's it's starting off as false so there won't be anything there but once you click the click button so we have it set as the left it'll actually click and then we'll actually move around and then once we unleash it will actually unclick so think of it kind of like that for what this bool is going to actually be doing or when it says true it'll mean that it's kind of checked on uh, and when it's false it will be checked off so what we have here is we have our min distance, so how close to the character it's going to get, and we have our max distance, how far it's going to get. So I put 3 and 8 for now. Uh, we can adjust those once we get in the game and we see how far it's going to actually be away from the character, how close it's actually going to be away. We can actually change it here in the inspector, so our 3 and 8 are there. How high the camera is going to be, uh, how, what fast it's actually going to be scrolling at, and then the X and Y axis. So if you look here, you do have the Y and the X. And actually, if you click on the rotate, uh, you do have the axis here. So you can actually get it on. So vortex, we'll be actually getting into that too here in a bit. Uh, so I mean vortex, vector, vector 3 position. So basically, the vector 3 will get into that too. So when you have something click like the character, so right now it's the camera and the character. So the vector 3, how uh, the rotation, it's going to use using the character as the main point the to orbit around, like the center point is basically what that's going to be. Now, I'm not the best at explaining this stuff out, uh, but I'll try to explain this as I go along. 
So how fast it's going to scroll, and then we have our X and Y. The wanted distance, what's the distance that we want? So when we scroll uh, back, what distance it's actually going to be going to. The current distance, what distance it's actually going to be at. And then like actual distance also. So uh, what distance it's switching over to. Not in that particular order, but uh, so float. I just need something there for now and the call to so the uh, Y, the X, and then I just put that blank. Uh, and then our we got our lerp rate as an int. And then we of course have our private bool. So because it's private, it's not showing up there. And that's why I was kind of getting that uh, to uh, uh, why I was showing you that previous on the other uh, thing right here. Uh, because it's private, it's not going to show up. We could actually make it public and then check it on or off, <clears throat> but I don't want to do that. And it's there's no point in actually doing that. So let's jump into this. So input. So if input get mouse button down, so if the mouse clicker is down, then it will equal true. So it will be check marked, and then we c it will do whatever it has to do. And then if mouse button up, so if it's unclicked, it will equal false. So zero is the left, I believe one is the right, and I believe two is the center mouse button. So if you want it as the right click, you'll just change this zero to the one. And on both of these, uh, you could actually make, you could actually do both buttons, the left or the right. It's up to you. Uh, just copy and paste this down below it, and then do zero, and then do one. And you can actually get both of them going. Uh, so if target equal null, so if there's no target selected, you're also going to get an error if there's no target selected. Uh, if you turn on, actually, you might not get an error. It actually you should get a caution thing that there's no target selected and it won't be working so always make sure you have your target selected input access for the mouse so when we move the mouse on the y the x and stuff it will actually do and what speed we're moving at it will actually try to move it got our vertical we got our horizon if input get access vertical and get access horizon and we're going to use a quaternion rotation on the y and the x our wanted distance uh, input get access mouse scroll wheel uh, so where our mouse scroll wheel is scrolling it will actually do we need to actually put a time in there to actually so in real time it's going to actually do uh, so it's time dot delta time real time is what we're using so when we actually click so like I'm clicking right now like I'm moving the thing it's actually going to update that as we move and as it moves every click to give us the wanted distance. So the distance that we want is what it's going to go to. So if we go all the way back to the 8, then it will give us our wanted distance, which will be the 8. Actual distance equals wanted distance. I could actually probably did that without the actual distance. So our vector 3, this is what I was talking about with the uh, rotation. The vector 3 position equals the target position. So the camera is going to rotate around the target position the target uh, which is the 3d model so that's why it's going to be rotating around so the center the earth think of the camera as a, the moon the target the player as the earth and it's going to rotate around the axis of the earth now uh, the camera will also have a vector 3 and we'll get into that in a second uh, so ray class cast hit uh, so the collision so when it actually hits the ground the terrain hits an object with a collision uh, with a box collider or any kind of collider on it it will actually won't go through so we have a collision on there so here's where we get into the vector 3 camera target position uh, new vector 3 so it's updating uh, the target position for the X the target position for the Y and then the camera height as well as the Z and what it that all going to be doing is the camera will also know how far away from the character it is so if the character is this T here and it's at the P it's going to move properly around the circle there if it's at the C it's going to move properly around so it's updating that too that also tells the distance too for the camera the vector 3 the actual distance uh, for the camera target position uh, so that this helps it tell how far back it's at 8. So let's move 8 around for the X or the Y axis. 
And then, yeah, so you got your rotation. I think that's everything that I actually need to cover with this script. So let's make sure you save it. Make sure there's no errors and there's nothing that pops up. Uh, if there's an error, like I said, um, it could be something to spell in the name, something like that. It'll actually tell you and then you can actually click on it. I'll put this camera script in the description down below so you can actually download it. This will save us some time if I just pre-write them out uh, and we can use it. Let's jump into this game. So we have our third person shown. So here's where it's going to be. So the height, we can always move the height down. We can actually, so I'm left clicking. I move, we have the collision. So we're hitting the ground and it's pushing it forward. We can, oh, I guess we can go through the uh, character there. Um, but we can rotate around. So if I'm watching, so if I put the camera here, I actually start moving forward, the character is going to run the direction of the camera that is facing. So we could have it where if the character was facing this way and the camera is here and I hit forward and the character started actually moving this way, the camera would snap back. We could actually do something like that. Uh, that would be something easy. I might want to do something like that in the future. Uh, we do have, so the scroll, so when I click, however many clicks it's doing, it's giving us our wanted distance. So it's pretty far back. Actually, that's all right for now. We can actually move around. And so when we move the camera, so I, I as I'm moving forward, I click and I move the camera. It's actually moving the character too. Uh, I don't think I want that, to be honest. I'm not too sure. I want that. So this is just something that, it's something basic, you know. We can always tweak out. Like I said, I want it to snap back. I do actually want that. So I actually don't want it to run forward like that. So I might go in and I might change that later on and do another uh, episode on the camera script but hopefully this kind of gave you the idea on the camera movement uh, we do have to create a character movement too and if we do that uh, we'll actually have to create uh, what the animations it's going to call on uh, so that's actually going to be pretty advanced we'll, we might do something simple and then do like a block or something for now just to get the direction uh, but for the jump and stuff too I don't like how this uh, jumps because you uh, you have to hit it, you can't, you have to give it a break before you can actually hit it again, and it's just a bit, not laggy, it's a bit um, clunky, it's just a bit clunky, I guess, would be the proper saying, so, and so I would like to actually create that, and create the same thing that we did, so where we can actually change stuff in the actual inspector, so we will have to create that too. But uh, yeah, so this episode would be that. Uh, just kind of getting this going, uh, getting the scripts. So let's do music too in this episode. I believe we still have time. So yeah, let's get started with the uh, music too. So like I said, I want to do this game with the least amount of coding as possible. And there's actually, you don't actually need really any coding to actually do music. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a game object and create an empty. So up here at the top, just go to empty. Let's just uh, click on it. And let's just call this uh, level music. Actually, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, put a little slash there and go music. So for music, you can do 3D music where you can have the object here like what we have here. And so you can actually have it when they get closer, they can hear it. And when they go far away, they won't. Or if they're on the right side of it, they'll hear it in their left headphone. If they're on the right side, you'll hear it. I mean, on the left side, you'll hear it on the right side. Or you can have it just play through the whole world. Uh, and it'll just play at the same level. Uh, it, you won't, uh, it won't uh, die down. It won't as you get farther away from the object. And we'll do something like that. So let's go into the audio here. And we're going to need a song or something. So what you can do is you can actually get a whole bunch of different songs, loop them together, like uh, splice them together through Audacity or whatever, and then have a soundtrack that will play. Or you can have a couple different ones for the level. Uh, and if you did actually want to do some coding, you can actually get it, make it so they can actually change the track through the uh, option menu or something like that. We're not going to do that. Like I said, I want to keep this simple. 
So I'm actually going to go to YouTube and I'm actually going to find a no copyright song that we can actually use and play through this level. So just give me a second and I'll go do that. All right, so here I am on YouTube. So I'm just looking for some no copyright uh, music, something that I can just uh, use for this tutorial. Uh, if you're doing your own game, you would like to get, you should actually get your own music uh, created for you. You can do that on the Unity or the Unreal forms. You can actually find composers there. Uh, let's go into here. And this is the song that I actually used in the first episode. It's kind of a tropical island type, nice soft music that will play. No copyright music with limitations. Uh, they do have a download here, so if you actually want to download this song, or if you want to use this track, and uh, here's the name right up here, Intro and Continuum, a live, no copyright song release. Uh, and just make sure you're not going to get striked for it or anything like that if you're doing this, uh, if you're going to be using the song which I'm doing right now. So how I like to download these is I just go to YouTube MP3 and then I think it's like the third one down. And I'll actually just copy and paste it here and then convert and follow those steps. So uh, yeah, I'll see you guys back in Unity. All right, now that we got our music, just drag and drop it in and it will get it all ready for you. So you don't have to change anything in here. It's all set up. So let's go to our level music. And what I did is I just zeroed everything down. So I went to the position for the transform up here. So say it was over here. All I did was zero it out. And now I'll just put it at the corner here. That way it's out of the way for the train. So you don't have sounds and everything that's all over the place. Uh, if it's going to be for the level. If it's going to be for something walking by like a bird trip and you have a bird in the tree and stuff. You want to keep it there. But otherwise, I'm just going to move it out of the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add a component to this level music object. Uh, so I'm just going to go to audio. I'm going to go to audio source because this is going to be a source. I'm going to open this up. And so it's going to play on the wake. So once the level loads up, it's going to play. And it's, I want to also loop. So when it stops, it won't just go silent. We're still going to have background music because it's just going to start over again. So I'm actually going to drag and drop this over to the audio clip up here. Or you could actually just click the circle and then double click it here. Whichever one you prefer. So for the sake of this video, I'm actually going to uh, lower the volume just so that I can actually talk over the music. So I'm actually going to go 0.05. And that should be good. And that's all you need to do. So when you actually play the level, the music's going to load up. Just give it a second. It has a little blank. So here it goes. So now wherever you run, I'm going to zoom out. Wherever you run, you're going to hear it at the same volume level. And it's just going to be background music. That's all this is. And that's, that's how easy it is to make background music. So now if you wanted to have uh, this as this level music, you could have it as this level music. If you wanted a playlist so that it's not the same music or you wanted to have three tracks, uh, just so you don't have to do coding, what you can actually do is open a program called Audacity. You can import all three tracks here and there'll be track one, track two, and track three here. And say the first track to end at 10. You could actually start the second track here at 10, and then if it second track to end at 13, and then that way you can displace everything together, right? Uh, and then that's a way that you can get around uh, not programming any audio in. If you wanted to, you could program something in for the options where the player can uh, adjust or change tracks, change tracks, adjust the volume, stuff like that. I, I'm not gonna do that. I might do the adjust volume one. Uh, but I want to do this game as less coding as possible. And when we do the adjust volume, we'll just adjust it. We'll have it linked, the script linked to the volume here so that it will actually just move the volume meter here. Uh, and that will just be something simple. It'll be like pretty much no programming at all. So next episode, uh, we will get into, because I think I'm running out of time here. So next episode, we will actually start getting into maybe the player movement script 
actually designing the terrain a bit, getting objects into the level where we can start interacting with. Maybe do a hit uh, collider uh, where if we touch it, we'll die. Uh, do we, I don't want any health, but I do want if they hit a hazard and they don't have a safety thing on, like in Sonic they had the shield, in Crash Bandicoot they had the mask, Spiral you had I think the gems or something, Sonic you also had the rings. So they'll end up getting hit, they'll lose whatever safety they have, and then if they get hit again, game over, you go to the save point. Uh, so we will do something like that. I did do, we might jump into 3D Studio Max and do rings, some pearls, uh, gems. I actually want to redo the spiral video. I actually had to delete that because the quality of it just was not good. Uh, YouTube had this issue where I got copyright striked uh, over a sound or something so I actually had to re-download it off there because I didn't have it backed up and then I had to re-upload it but when I did it it changed the uh, uh, quality of the video so it was 7020 and you couldn't read the uh, writing you couldn't read like inspector or anything like that and I had to go through all these videos and I ended up re-uploading them and now I had to go through them again because you couldn't read it and I was getting people commenting on it and it was just a pain I end up just deleting those videos. So when I do this tutorial, I will redo those videos on how to create gems, how to animate them, how to get like the particle effect and stuff like I did, uh, the glass effect and all that. I'll, I'll get into all that. But uh, yeah, sorry for that little mumble uh, about YouTube and their problems. Everyone knows YouTube and how it is. But yeah, we'll get into that next. Oh, and before you guys close the uh, game engine, just remember to save your scene and to save your project. I like to just double check that too. Uh, when you close it, it should just pop up as if you forgot to save, it'll say, do you want to save your scene? Uh, just hit save. And I'll see you guys next episode. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you then.